This webinar is brought to you by Admit Advantage. Admit Advantage is a leading global admissions and career consulting company founded by the same people who built Admit Me. Visit admitadvantage.com for more details. So hi, my name is Kofi Kankam, one of the founders of Admit Me and Admit Advantage. And today we're discussing cracking Wharton. Let's talk a little bit about the application itself. So one thing I'll say to you is you should not jump into the application and just start writing. You should basically take a step back and think about your brand, for example. Think about what are the three to five leadership characteristics that you embody, that you've demonstrated across your professional, academic, personal, slash community endeavors, right? So either start from this direction where you say, look, I think I'm analytical. I think I'm a great communicator. I think I can make decisions with limited information. I think I'm very civically or community minded. And then think of stories and experiences and accomplishments that demonstrate those things, or perhaps go from the opposite direction. Think about the stories, experiences, and accomplishments, again, that are personal, academic, and professional. Think about the stories of your life. If I interviewed your best friend or your partner, and I said, tell me the stories of your life, Joseph or Stacy. What would those stories be? And what leadership characteristics do each of those stories demonstrate about you? It's important in some respects to differentiate yourself. And Kenneth ask about this all the time. But it's really most important to be authentic and be passionate, right? So making sure that you're not giving the story of what you think the admissions office wants to hear. Tell the story of why you're really interested in school. If you're, if you're coming from a world that's not business, what was the catalyst to get you interested in getting an MBA and, and getting going probably into business? What motivated you to do that? Why are you passionate about Wharton? Beyond the fact that it's highly ranked and maybe in a, in a fun city, what is it about the school? Is it the professors? Have you met students? Have you been inspired by famous alumni like Elon Musk, for example, right? What is it about the school that makes you passionate? What is it about your own life? What are the things that you love doing, perhaps outside of your job, that make you passionate? And again, not don't rely on the numbers. This is not the kind of school where they are going to reject a large number of people have three fives and 700 plus GMAT scores or the equivalent functional GRE score. It's about selling the dream. It's about telling your story. It's about having a seven to 10 step plan where business school represents maybe step three and you've already done steps one and two. You've got to have a big enough dream. It can't be, for example, the school's not interested if you sort of say, look, I want to come here and open up a coffee shop. I want to open up three coffee shops in Philadelphia. I, I love coffee shops. But if you say, look, I want to start the next Starbucks in Asia, that's different. That's a big enough dream. That's not just coffee. That's systems. That's marketing. That's differentiation. That's people, right? That's raising funding. That's creating a company that has a certain culture that's impacting the world. That's what Wharton, and may I add, other top-tier schools want to see. Now, it may be that you want to be a managing director of a bank. That's fine. But you have to just have a vision and an executable plan. And the school wants to see that you're not expecting the school to give everything to you. You are already moving forward. You're already creating momentum. And in fact, what you're asking, just like an investor, you're asking the school to bet on a winning horse. You're trying to show the school momentum and for the school to sort of say, I want to be part of Stacy's life because Stacy's someone that's going places and she'll be an amazing ambassador for the school. The grades and the GMAT or the GRE are just necessary but not sufficient. They are check the box marks, but they are not going to get you in, but they will certainly keep you out. Now, I asked an admissions officer, actually on our team, we have a former Wharton admissions officer, and I said, you know, what are you, what are you looking for? And this is his quote, okay? We want quiet confidence. We want humility. But we want people that are very accomplished. We're not looking for super brash candidates. We want candidates that are humbly quiet, 
that are humbly successful, that are more of the, let's call it, if all of you that follow sports, more of the Tim Duncan kind of leader, and less of someone who's in your face and kind of constantly boastful and bragging about themselves. Now, look, they don't always get that. I think we know that. But that's generally what they're looking for. There's a bit of a Quaker mentality, uh, humility that the school expects and typically preaches to its students. And they're looking for that within its applicant pool. In terms of the application itself, you've got three rounds. It's fairly typical. Round one has moved. It used to be November and it used to be October. And now it's in basically mid-September. And what that means for you is that if you apply for round one, you will find out that you've been accepted by mid-December. Mid and that presents wonderful opportunities for you to leave your job early, to take a pre-MBA internship, to travel, etc. If you apply round two, you'll find out in March slash April. Round three, you'll find out in May slash June. You typically want to apply in round one or round two. 80 to 90% of the spots are filled in round one or round two, meaning if you're a really good candidate and you happen to apply in April for round three, you may get denied largely because there's just not enough spots, i.e. you could have gotten in if you applied in round one or round two. Okay, There are two essays, and if you're a reapplicant, i.e. if you applied in the last two years and were denied, uh, you've got a reapplicant essay. That's an additional essay. You need two recommendations. The good news for you is Wharton is one of those schools that has agreed uh, with a lot of other schools that have the same recommendation. So if you're applying to six or seven schools and Wharton's one of them, they're not going to have to write, uh, it's most likely they're not going to have to write a separate letter of recommendation for you. The recommenders have to choose uh, some of the characteristics, a couple out of 10 that they think describe who you are, some of my list out before, and then they've got to answer questions about you feedback questions, growth questions, development questions, how they see you as a leader. Those kinds of themes will come up in the questions that they're asked, okay? The resume basically needs to be one page. Um, the resume really should be an impact statement. It shouldn't just read like a set of responsibilities at your job. It should really highlight the depth of your work, right? And the fact that you've been doing a lot of different things. Some of you will be deep and have done you know, one or two things in one company. And some of you have done like three to five things, maybe in two or three companies. So it's got to play to your strengths, but it should showcase both. Wharton is one of those schools, like most top tier schools, I, with the exception of schools like Kellogg, where it's interview, interview by invitation, excuse me, interview by invitation. So they will interview typically 35 to 45% of the people that submit the applications, okay? And you've got a team-based discussion where they want to see how you interact with other people. You're given questions beforehand to prepare for. You have to have a response to it. And you go in and you have to uh, tackle a problem and come up with a solution and present that solution. And then there's an ind individual interview following that team-based interview. So it's a little bit different. That team-based interview probably came into play probably about four to six years ago, maybe five years ago or so. And so I think Morton's going to stick with it because they think it's helpful. And one of the reasons they're doing it is because they've gotten feedback that, like, you may produce a lot of amazing people, but we're most interested, we being companies, in how they work with teams. That's what they're going to do when they graduate. And so Morton realized that it's probably a good idea to see up front if people have the kinds of characteristics which make them a good teammate. And also to sort of signal to the applicant pool that that's what they're looking for, people that are a good teammates, so for both reasons. The essays, there are two essays, as I mentioned. The first essay is, what do you hope to gain professionally from a Wharton MBA? And what you really need to remember are a couple things. One, this is about uh, the long term. This is not about your first job out of school. That's probably the biggest mistake that I see people make where they just write about, I wanna go to Warner so I can work in McKinsey. Okay, but then what? How long? So think about your goals. Or I'd probably think about structuring this in the short term, long term. So that kind of indice, right? In terms of you know the first three to five, three to seven years being the short term and five to seven plus years being the long term. 
but also with regard to industry, role slash function, title, and location. That's the other sort of grouping. And the more specific you can be, the more credible your application will be and the more application will pop, okay? Think about your weaknesses as well as per the second bullet point. And so think about where Wharton is strong, right? Data, analytics, marketing, et cetera, and forcing you to become a leader via clubs and organizations, which are largely student run, as I mentioned. And think about how your weaknesses can be addressed by going to a school like Wharton, Wharton specifically, right? That's another way to tackle this problem. I would also say that too many candidates focus on just what they're going to get within the class and professionally. You really have to think more so about how your teammates, how your classmates will be impacting you and developing you. And it's really important that you showcase this, that you speak about your desire to work with classmates outside the class and be developed by them. And then life after graduation. So, you know, you want to sort of showcase that you understand that your Wharton affiliation is not just the 18 months that you're on campus, but it's actually a it's actually a lifelong commitment that you're going to be doing with the school as you move forward. Okay. So I'm an example, right? I am now 14 years out of school. So literally one seventh of my affiliation with the school is when I was on campus. I've spent two years on campus and I spent 12 years as an alum. And Wharton wants to see that you're going to be an involved one. And clearly not everyone's super involved, but if you want to get in, you definitely should speak about how that's important to you and how you want to be part of that community and be contributing to that community, you know, as you move forward. The second essay is about, you know, speaking about sort of something that impacted you, an accomplishment that you can't find someplace else, and how it's going to help you be a contributor to the Warren community, right? So I would really think about, okay, what else is missing from your one essay, from your rec letters? you know, the data portion you have to fill online in your resume, what else is missing? Now, this is part of the reason you want to start up front and sort of say, okay, here, here are the specific stories and or specific leadership accomplishment, leadership sort of characteristic or two that I want to include with the specific essay, right? Again, you also want to understand that this is a community that exists outside of sort of what you're just contributing in class and outside what you're doing while you're on campus, and really about your life, about the lifelong relationship, about the relationship that is outside of Philadelphia, that's outside of the Northeast, that's outside of America, that's in different parts of the world. How are you going to be involved? How are you going to make your mark? How are you going to enhance the experience of being an alum and a student for your peer group? Wharton wants to see that. And I think this is also a wonderful opportunity to showcase non-work related accomplishments, okay? There's too much of a focus often, especially I feel like for Wharton, people kind of think that that's all Wharton wants to see, I think because they're known as being a data school or finance school, kind of a no-nonsense school, where they shy away from highlighting other accomplishments. That's not what you want to do. You definitely want to focus on your personal accomplishments, okay? Three applicant essay. So again, if you applied in the last two years, you did not get in. Basically, this is an essay about how have you grown. And there is a tangible aspect to this, i.e. getting a better GMAT or GRE, i.e. taking classes and having an alternative transcript, classes in accounting, finance, stats, and econ. But there's also an intangible aspect. So, you know, do you have more focus? Have you had more discussions with, with alumni? Has the school, have you done things to make the school resonate? Have you done things to kind of philosophically, intellectually, emotionally better prepare yourself to take advantage of all that Warren has to offer as well as be a contributor? There's an element of looking and being self-aware enough that if you didn't get in last year, you didn't get in for a reason, and you've done things to make yourself better, okay? It's not enough to know that you have deficiencies. That's great. But if you want to really stand out, you want to know you've got a deficiencies as phase one. You want to address those deficiencies as phase two. And phase three, hopefully, is when you encounter a situation where that weakness was exposed before, 
phase three is because you've identified the weakness and worked on it, when you encounter it again, you actually succeed. That's phase three. So seeing that there's a problem, fixing the problem, and then taking those lessons and applying them in a similar situation which tripped you up before and coming out on the other side successfully. That's the ultimate reapplication essay sort of secret sauce that the school really wants. I talked about the interviews a little bit by invitation only. I recommend that if you can, you get to campus. Um, I think that gives you the ability to show your interest in the school. I also think that there are cultural elements you'll pick up that you can also mention in your interview. I think it's a great way to start your interview off or probably make you feel more comfortable if you've come from a class, if you talk to some classmates. It's just a better icebreaker, and it gives you a sense of how Wharton's different than other schools. And don't be fooled. You know, Wharton, just like other schools, wants to increase and improve its yield, i.e., the number of students that matriculate over the number of students that it accepted. They want that to be as close to 100% as possible. And visiting the school demonstrates that you are highly serious about the school and it's your top choice, or at least one of your few top choices, okay? The team-based portion we spoke about, it's going to be five or six other applicants. You're not going to know who they are. You have to be aware of kind of who you are in a team. Are you a talker? Are you someone that's quiet? Are you process-oriented? Are you someone that wants to make the presentation? Are you someone that sort of goes along with the flow? Or are you always playing devil's advocate? You have to know who you are. You have to play to those strengths, but you have to be somewhat flexible. You have to have, for example, you know, when you come in with the problem, a solution to the problem or a path, if someone else mentions that path, you can't say, I agree with what Tony said, or I agree with what Sarah says, right? You have to have like a plan B and plan C in the event that your idea is quote unquote scooped, all right? In the interview, you want to talk about real world business scenarios. So, and those of you that don't work in business, you can still tie it to, let's say, management scenarios, real things that have happened, not fantastical things. Okay, use work examples and make sure you're solution oriented. You have to make decisions. You have to make decisions with limited information, with limited time. So this is not, your interview is not an esoteric, philosophical, academic discussion. It is a real life, practical, executable plan that you're expected to come up with that takes into account all the limitations and restrictions that you have, right? If you're applying to other schools like law or healthcare, you're going to have multiple interviews. So prepare yourself stamina wise for that and realize that the one on one interview opportunity is a massive one. So make sure you're prepared for the last 10 minutes and understand that it'll be a mix of it'll be blind, it'll be behavioral, and there might be an opportunity for you to comment on how you experienced, you know, the group. Uh, the group interview. So make sure you're prepared for that interview because it is, in effect, your closing statement, right? If you want to get ahead, you should definitely be going to the website, the school's website, Wharton's website, sign up for the newsletter, figure out when they're coming to your city. Now, they will be coming to a lot of cities and you should go visit them when they come to your city, especially if you can't make it to campus. We've got a deadline deadlines page on Admit Me. Um, admit.me slash MBA dash application dash deadlines, where you can sort of get the deadlines and essay prompts for, you know, a ton of top tier MBA programs. We're going to be adding more content on there, no less than bi-weekly, if not weekly, all right? Visit the school. I can't stress this enough. I know for some of you it's impossible. I know for some of you it is possible. You're going to think it's not important. It is very important. It's very important if you're accepted, you know, because this is where you're going to be spending your life. And it's very important to get accepted because it gives you an advantage over your peers and shows that sense of commitment and interest in the school that can sometimes be a tiebreaker. If you feel like you need help, reach out to Admit Advantage. They're our partner. Some of the same people that started Admit Me are affiliated with Admit Advantage. And you can get experts on a, you know, expert support on a one on one basis. Okay. Admit Me is an amazing platform. Admit advantage is that one on one help that some of you may need. Admit me, never apply alone. <laughs>